We're talking Jacksonville Jaguars and New York Giants on today's episode of Locked On Dynasty. You are Locked On Dynasty Football, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Here are your hosts, Matt Williamson and Ryan McDowell. Thanks for making Locked On Dynasty your first listen every day. We're free and available on all platforms. Today is Crossover Thursday. Crossover Thursday is presented by our friends at Prize Picks. Prize Picks is so much fun, so easy to play, no competing with other players. It's you versus the projections. Pick between two to six players, and if they score more or less than their Prize Picks projection, you can win up to 25 times your money on your entry. It can literally take less than 60 seconds to enter. It is that easy. We love prize picks. We know you will as well. First time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with promo code locked on. That's prizepicks.com, promo code locked on. Welcome to the Locked On Dynasty Football Podcast. I'm your host, Ryan McDowell. You can follow me on Twitter at RyanMC23. Joining me as always is Matt Williamson. Find Matt on Twitter at Williamson NFL. How's it going today, Matt? It is great. How about you? Yeah, I'm, I'm good as well. Normally we get here, it's it's Thursday later in the week, and we've got that uh we've got those big games to look forward to. We don't we don't have that this week. I, I hate uh, the week between the the week between the Super Bowl. I mean, I, I get it. They they need to have it. We do have the senior bowl coming. That's up the part and, I love. Yeah, we've had those practices to to track and you know, some some names that maybe were not on the radar or are or, or putting themselves on the radar. I think back to to Christian Watson last year, you know, kind of right. kind of came out of nowhere and uh, was almost a first round pick in uh, in the NFL draft. So uh, we've seen some guys play well this week, uh, at least in the practices. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I, I like looking forward to that NFL game and knowing we only have one more and we've got to wait wait another week plus for it. I don't like that part. That's no fun. I I hear you. I don't like all the media stuff, all the hype and all oh. that kind of stuff. But I do like the Senior Bowl diversion, you know. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, I, I learned I learned an awful lot this week just watching Senior Bowl stuff. So I, yeah, I think it's very, very valuable for me. So same, same uh, here, same here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are talking, as I mentioned earlier, we're talking Jacksonville Jaguars and New York Giants, a couple teams that uh, advanced past the first round. I guess these are our first two teams uh, that played multiple postseason games. Let's start with the Jaguars, Matt. They they end up nine and eight, uh, first in the AFC uh, South. Of course, they beat the Titans in the finale to to take down the uh, to take down their division. They have the big comeback against the Chargers to advance, and, and and they end up, of course, losing to the Chiefs in round two. But I think there's a lot to there's a lot to like and a lot to feel good about if you're a Jaguars fan oh. or if you're just a fan of of one of these young players on their offense. Oh, without question. I mean, the AFC South looks like it should be dominated by the Jags for the foreseeable future. Uh, yeah. They have a coach, they have a quarterback, they've got some very athletic defensive pieces. Oh, by the way, they picked up Ridley. You know, that's kind of a nice little thing to do. I mean, to surround Lawrence with. And ATN's exciting. The O-line's good enough. And uh, I'm a Jags believer. I I like where they're at. Yeah, I need to check on this. I I noticed this earlier in the week as as I was looking over uh, this team and and kind of prepping for this episode. Their starting quarterback, Trevor Lawrence, running back, ETN, their top wide receiver, Christian Kirk, and their tight end, Evan Ingram. Mm-hmm. All four of those guys played all 17 games this season. And wow. I, I need I need to check, but I feel like that's got to be it, – it's they might be the only team that did that. And, and if not, it, it certainly is uh, certainly is a rarity to have those four uh, all play every single game. And um, th- that's that's a good thing, right? It's a it's a good place sure, to, but it won't keep to start. Up. Exactly. There's right. <laughs> a little bit of like, oh, what happens when, uh, you know, what happens when somebody turns their ankle and they miss a month or, uh, you know, certainly not. We hope it's nothing more serious than that. But mm-hmm. but that, again, is the reality of the game. So it feels good right now for this season, but you've got to keep that realistic uh, point of view moving forward. All right, let's talk about this roster because they really, uh, really stepped up this season. And, and of course, the coach is the uh, 
the coach is the the big difference here, I think. But Trevor Lawrence in his second season, 17.4 fantasy points per game, quarterback 11 on the year, 10 times he was a quarterback one in fantasy, 10 different weeks. And right now in our dynasty ADP, he is the quarterback six. Travis Etienne. Uh, it was essentially his rookie year uh, after he missed the entire uh, season last year with an injury. 12.1 fantasy points per game, running back 24. Uh, and he's being valued right now as the RB6 in Dynasty. He was backed up by uh, Jermichael Hasty, by Snoop Connor. Both of those guys played sparingly, although we saw more and more of Hasty down the stretch. It feels like Hasty is a restricted free agent. Uh, they paid up at the wide receiver position last off season, they gave Christian Kirk a huge deal. He ends up with 14.2 fantasy points per game wide receiver, 18. They paid up for Zay Jones and kind of got laughed at, uh, including by us, I believe. Yeah, yeah. But Zay Jones played really well. 12.4 fantasy points per game, five times uh, on the season. He was a top 24 fantasy receiver. Uh, both of those guys, I think, still being undervalued. Kirk is wide receiver yeah. 34 in Dynasty. Zay Jones, wide receiver 58 in Dynasty. Uh, they also had Marvin Jones, who gave them se uh, seven fantasy points per game. Marvin, the veteran, is a free agent. Uh, this could be the end of his time with Jacksonville, maybe even the end of his time mm -hmm. in the NFL. Uh, and you mentioned already Calvin Ridley obviously did not play this season due to a suspension. Uh, but being valued as the wide receiver 43 and uh, just feels like he's kind of icing on this Jaguars cake right now sure. uh, gives, gives you uh, even more reason for some excitement headed into next season. Uh, they also signed Evan Ingram last year as a free agent, just a, a one year deal for him. So he's going to be a free agent as well. Uh, once again, 10.4 fantasy points per game, tight end seven on the season tied in nine in dynasty. Uh, so let's, let's start actually with Ingram there, Matt. Do you think they, do they franchise him? Do they, uh, do they try to work out a deal with him? Things went really well. This was Evan Ingram's best, uh, best year of his career. Absolutely. And very athletic. They used them really well. So it often takes highly touted tight ends a couple of years to really understand the league. And he certainly has, I think you probably franchise them. I mean, you'd hate to lose them, um, try to work out a long-term deal. I, I was kind of on the fence on that. I mean, is he a franchisable tight end? The number's not that bad, you know? I mean, that's not a bad position to do it at if you're not sure. Yeah, I, I don't think the franchise numbers, the official franchise numbers have, have come out yet. They no. they end up giving him last year uh, just under $10 million, I believe, Um you know, with with bonuses and everything i mean and the the tag's gonna be you know like 12 ish right yeah I, mean, I was gonna say the, the tag's not gonna be right. right the tag's not gonna be much more expensive than what they gave him last year when he was coming off uh, uh some disappointing years right, with right. the giants so yeah i could his, certainly and yeah, his stock his stock grew more than what his contract would grow if you're franchising him you know yeah absolutely so i i think uh I think Ingram will probably be back, whether it's mm -hmm. a uh, a long term contract or the tag. I expect Ingram to be back in Jacksonville. You look at their key pieces that we've talked about: Lawrence, uh, Etn, Kirk, Zay Jones, and of course Calvin Ridley are all back uh, for certain under contract, and and uh, wouldn't look at any of those as cut or trade candidates. No. Matt, how much do we love? trevor lawrence right oh I mean, yeah this th that's that's what i want you to talk about we're going to do that a little bit more right after this break i've been telling you about FanDuel a little bit but we are super excited about them i mean they're a, a new partner here with the locked on network and they're also the number one sports book in america if you're new if you're new to FanDuel, that's even better they have so many great features that make betting on sports fun and easy New customers join today and get to get started with $150 in free bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. Just sign up at FanDuel.com slash locked on, all one word. Uh, FanDuel has all your favorite bets from the money line to point spreads, player props, much, much more than that, of course. Um, you can even combine your bets for a bigger payout with the same game parlay. I've um, been doing that quite a bit, actually, and doing quite well through the playoffs. And it's all on an app that's very secure, safe, very easy to use. 
So football fans don't miss out. Place your first $5 bet and get $150 in free bets, win or lose, at fanduel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, the official, the official sports book partner of the NFL. Locked On is heading to the Senior Bowl. Get inside analysis from the host that covered the NFL's next generation in college and find out which NFL draft boards these players will be climbing all in one location. Subscribe to the Locked On NFL Draft for nightly live shows on the Senior Bowl from, from the Senior Bowl uh, all week. We've already heard those Tuesday and Wednesday. They were great. Check that out tonight as well at 9 p.m. All right, Matt, let's let's talk Trevor Lawrence. Quarterback yeah. six in our ADP. A big change from, from this time last year when uh, a- after a season or, or at least most of a season um, with that coaching situation, uh, or, you know, Urban Meyer there, we, we were calling him a bust. And I don't say we, you and I specifically, but the dynasty community in general was – uh, at best questioning whether he was the real deal. And that, that looks silly now. <laughs> yeah, it does. I mean, as a prospect, I didn't know that he would, I mean, I didn't quite buy that he was John Elway coming out or Andrew Luck or, you know, one of these type of guys, but pretty darn close. And I was a believer felt for him last year. I thought, I mean, the other thing he was thrown to like Laquan Treadwell last year. <laughs> I mean, not, not only was the organization dysfunctional, and he had to be the adult in the room, but the guys he was throwing to were just horrendous. And he was obviously very advanced mentally, poised, all that type of thing. And we know he's athletic and can throw the football and it's all coming together. And I, I do think he's going to be a great one. Yeah, absolutely. How, uh, how highly are we pushing him up the rankings? I, I said quarterback six, you know, he's behind, uh, of course, behind Mahomes and, and Josh yeah. Allen. He's behind Burrow and Herbert. I think he's right in there with those guys uh, or, or at least, I mean, maybe, maybe right. a step behind still, but Burrow Herbert Lawrence is pretty close to me. Yeah. That, yeah. And that's what I was going to say. He's, yeah. he's more in, in that tier, you know, probably, probably not to Allen Mahomes yet, no, uh, no. but yeah, he's, he's with that second tier uh, and, and rightfully so, honestly, you look at the weapons, you look at the, the direction this team is going, uh, the yeah, the direction this team is going, and mm-hmm. and it all feels it all feels good. Um, nice. We said Justin Jefferson was a top tough guy to buy. Trevor Lawrence is going to be uh, nearly impossible to buy, but if you can <laughs> if you can get your hands on him, if you can get him on your roster, make that move for sure. Matt, one guy that I'm not quite as confident in is Travis Etienne. What what's what? your take on him? I'm I'm I think he's I think he's fine. I think he's fine. I'm not sure if we should be valuing him as a top six dynasty running back as a uh, second or third rounder in, in dynasty, which is where he is right now. Like we talked Austin Eckler this week. I think, I, I don't think he has that kind of ceiling. Yeah, I mean, I don't know that he'll catch that many passes, be that kind of touchdown producer. And if I were the Jags, I would strongly consider finding a 225, 230 pound bruiser, you know, I mean, somebody that can put games away and be a physical guy, but I'm an ATN believer. I think he's a really talented player. Well, they kind of had that right. And in, in James Robinson and no one um, seems to like James Robinson. Though. Yeah. No kidding. <laughs> uh, they, they trade James Robinson, which at first I thought was a big sign of, uh, of confidence in Travis ETN. And ultimately I realized maybe it's just that James Robinson is either not that good or mm-hmm. uh, n- still not fully recovered from that Achilles injury yeah, that, uh, that he suffered. Um, so yeah, uh, hasty. We talked about uh, Snoop Connor, not, not that big banger that, that you're talking about. So maybe there is some room on this team for, uh, for that, 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 big running back who can uh, run down the clock when they need to. Yeah, I think there is Christian Kirk or Calvin Ridley who ends up with more fantasy points next year. I loved Ridley's game, but being away from the game is really difficult. I think they're like dead even. And I bet most people look at Ridley ahead of him because he kind of always liked the new shiny thing. And I think right. you mentioned this to start the show that 
in general, I think Kirk is an underrated football player. I mean, he's a very solid player and worth the money. I think they're about tied. Okay. Uh, Kirk is wide receiver 34 in our ADP. Uh, Ridley is rising, certainly bouncing back from um, from a, a huge value loss being out for the year. Still wide receiver 43. Hmm. Yeah, I think they're close as well. Uh, I would probably rather have Ridley. So if you can acquire him at any type of discount, uh, I think that makes some sense. Okay. Matt, we're going to take a break. We'll come back and we'll talk about the New York football giants. Let me tell you about prize picks. And they've been a good friend of the show here for a while. And I've done quite a bit and worked out really well for me. And, and what you do is... You pick between two and six players, and all that matters is that you'll score more or less than their prize pick projection. You don't play against other people. That's one of my favorite things about it. And you can win up to 25 times your money on any entry. So it's just you versus the projections available, which I think gives me a leg up for sure. I stick to NFL, but I think there's much money to be made if you know a great deal about some of these lesser-known sports. I mean, they have disc golf and MMA and cricket and esports, soccer, of course, NFL, NHL, PGA, all the ones you can think of. But they really go deep, and I think there's a lot of money to be made there if you're an expert in some of the other you know, disc golf, Euro basketball, things like that. Entries are made in 60 seconds or less. It's super easy, safe and fast withdrawals, which I love. Right now, they're currently optional or operational in 30 states as well as Canada. So this is what you do. Download the Prize Pick app or go to prizepicks.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports. First-time users can receive 100% instant deposit match up to 100 bucks with promo code locked on. If you deposit $100, bucks, Prize Picks gives you $100. Bucks. If you deposit $50, bucks, Prize Picks gives you $50. So don't forget to enter our promo code locked on at sign up for an instant deposit match up to $100. All Thanks again for making Locked On Dynasty your first listen every day. Subscribe to the Locked On NFL podcast and get daily conversations on the biggest NFL stories. Plus, in depth analysis on the biggest games with NFL key predictions every Friday. And Mondays, local insiders cover the weekend with game to game episodes. Locked on NFL, available on YouTube and wherever you get your podcast. Matt, let's move over to the New York Giants, third in the NFC East. Uh, they made it to the second round of the playoffs, lost to the Eagles there uh, in, in, in disappointing fashion, but probably not a big surprise, unfortunately. Uh, this team has a lot of work to do this oh, offseason. Daniel Jones, free agent. Saquon Barkley, free agent. Darius Slayton, free agent. Sterling Shepard, free agent. Matt Breda, their backup running back. He's a free agent. Richie James, who stepped up and, and was their top target for quite a while. He's a free agent as well. So many questions to be answered here. I mean, Dan, it, it really starts with it's with sticky. it's it's Jones and Barkley, right? right it's Jones right. and Barkley. For our uh, purposes, I think, right. I think they definitely want Barkley back. And I think they probably want Daniel Jones back. Barkley's the, uh, he was the running back five this season. Daniel Jones was the quarterback eight this season, both averaged right around 18 fantasy points per game. Daniel Jones looked like a different player, uh, this year playing under Brian Dable. Um, it's, I mean, it's just going to be a matter of, do they want to give him that long-term contract, mm -hmm. uh, they, they've got to give one of these guys, if they're going to keep them both, they've got to give one of these guys uh, at least a three-year deal for big money. And I, I think they're hesitant to give any running back, you know, that three-year, what? As they should be, right. Six, yeah. six, you know, 50-something million. Yeah. Uh, and and they're, they're probably hesitant on Jones as well, at least somewhat. What do you think they do here? They have a lot of cap space. Um, yeah. They can, I think Leonard Williams is like a $40 million cap hit too, that they can cut him and even open up more so they can do it. But kind of, as you mentioned, you don't want to get stuck with these two. If they're not the answers or they go get old on you, like Saquon, like running backs tend to do. This is sticky. I mean, I know they just went to the playoffs and Dayball probably be my coach of the year. 
I think the smart move, and I don't think they'll take this approach, is to resign neither. <laughs> you know what I mean? And not tank, but kind of bottom out. And, you know, I would build an infrastructure and spend money on guards and tight ends and wide receivers and things like that, as opposed to a, what I think is an average quarterback and a running back that's already, you know, not far from being that Dalvin Cook conversation we had th- this week, you know, so... I think they'll end up with Barkley and Jones back there. And that's great for fantasy because those guys are very productive fantasy players. But I don't know that that's a good long-term move for the football team. So you wouldn't even tag either one of those guys if this was your call? I would tag one because that's a year and plus you could trade yeah. them. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I think yeah. the tag, if, if they could tag them both, I think it would be an easy conversation. And um, and that's that's what they would do. Mm-hmm. Um but but they're going to have to choose. Um, I mean, I would have a number in mind for both. Hey, Daniel, here's a two-year deal at X. I can't give you big money, you know, and he might say no, you know, and then tag the other one. Well, it seems like they have a number in mind for Barkley. Those reports came out uh, yeah. after they lost that they had uh, made a long-term contract offer to Barkley, and he had turned that down. Uh, so that's... Yeah, just just going to be a huge offseason right. for the Giants. They could look totally different. Uh, one thing we do know, though, is they're going to have Brian Dable leading that team. Yeah, and, that's and great. This is right. a roster that honestly did not change that much from the previous year when they were one of the worst teams in, in the NFC to this right. year when, when they were among the best. Um, it, I, I don't know if you agree, but I think their plan was let's get rid of some big hits. Uh, give Dayball, you know, a, a kind of. Uh, they have a ton of cap space, as I mentioned, and well, Galladay could Galladay could be. He'll go as well. to yeah, right, right, right. That's going to be that's going to open up some. some but I money. bet they expected to win four games. They're like they didn't expect to be a playoff team. Yeah, yeah. Um, we've talked about some of these guys already. A few others to mention: Wandell Robinson uh, looked looked good at times, but missed uh, missed quite a bit of time with injury and uh, ended his season with a torn ACL. So he could be uh, potentially a, a pup candidate to start the year. Hmm. Uh, Isaiah Hodgins, they, they picked up from the uh, Buffalo Bills scrap heap. He ends up being kind of their top guy, uh, their top receiver uh, late in the season. He's still under contract. So that is, uh, you know, I guess one, one bright note there mentioned Galladay, already man what a what a disaster that wow, was one yeah. of the worst contracts we've seen in some time uh he was he was not good even before this year and this year he was uh, basically a non-factor average less than two fantasy points per game uh the expectation is he will be cut and uh they'll they'll get some of that money back and uh, another rookie daniel bellinger was a nice surprise for for them mm-hmm. played pretty well earning that job so uh, you know, on, on our, my notes here for each of these teams, I, I circle all the free agents and I look at my notes. I've got, I've got three guys that, that aren't circled here. Wandale Robinson, Isaiah Hodgins and, and Daniel Bellinger. And we like all those guys, but if, if that's what you're looking at as right. going into the season, it's like, Ooh, are, are they going to be able to repeat as a playoff team? Are they going to be competitive? It I don't think doesn't so. Doesn't feel like it, right? It, no, it would be not offensively. Of course, it, it didn't feel like it this time last year either. So we'll sure. see if Brian Dable can work his magic. Um, recognizing that some of these guys may not even be on the roster next year, let's try to find a, a buy and or a sell. Is there one of these guys that you are targeting? You're trying to get on your dynasty rosters right now. I do think Bellinger is a NFL starting tight end and stock will probably rise, you know, it takes tight ends a little while to get going. I'm a Robinson fan. That injury news you kind of said wasn't super encouraging though. I didn't realize that could linger into next year, but I think he's a slot machine. They use a second round pick on him, traded Tony immediately after almost. So I think he's very encouraging. This might sound insane, but Sterling Shepard's good at football. He just, yeah. you know what I mean? Like he's worth nothing. Like I own him in a couple of leagues as like my last guy on the roster. I'm not cutting them. I mean, he could land somewhere in a barren wide receiver market and be okay. Hopefully stays healthy for more than two days. 
Yeah, Shepard had the tough injury as well that ended yeah. his season. Um, I, I feel like I've given up on Sterling Shepard because of injury sure. like six different times in, in his <laughs> yeah, career. Yeah, right. And he, he just keeps coming back and, and producing. So, uh, you know. For short stints. Right. I, I, I hope he can do it again. That would be a great story. But uh, we'll see. Played played just three games this year. Uh, he did average 11 and a half fantasy points in those three games. Yeah, so, he's good. I'm, I mean, he was he was producing when he was out there. Uh, just uh, couldn't couldn't stay healthy, unfortunately. Darius Slayton is kind of an interesting one because I think for much of the season, he looked like the best receiver on the Giants roster. We could we could probably say that about seven or eight different players. <laughs> That's um, like the most, most cursed room in the history of the world, right? It really is. Um, do you think, I mean, does, does Slayton get interest out there? This is, remember, this is a guy last off season, they were trying to give away in a trade. They, uh-huh. they were ready to take anything they could get for him, according to reports, and couldn't get anything. Uh, really found no interest. They keep him, and he ends up playing pretty well uh, for, for much of the season. Uh, any any thoughts on Darius Slayton as he enters free agency? Yeah, he's never been for me. I don't think I've owned him in any league of any type, but he's probably better than I've given him credit for. My hunch is, you know, th- how this draft is shaping up, I wouldn't be shocked at all if their first-round pick is one of those receivers, Addison or somebody along those lines. Mm. And I think Odell could end up back there or a Hopkins or maybe even like a Michael Thomas or somebody like that on the cheap. So I think their receiver room looks drastically different other than Wandell. Uh, lastly here on the Giants, I've heard some talk with the way Daniel Jones played this season, especially late in the season, uh, that he should be in that quarterback one range. He's he's not quite there. He's quarterback 15 in our ADP. Are, are we underestimating Daniel Jones? Should he be more in that quarterback 11 or 12 range? Should we be valuing him uh, higher than we are? I think so. You know, I I didn't like the draft pick when it happened. I've been hard on this guy, but he's built for fantasy as a runner, especially if he's going to be with Dayball and incorporate, you know, five, six, seven design quarterback runs into the playbook. And we never seem to give him credit for this is we just talked about how awful his receivers are. What if he had a good receiver? (laughs) You know what I mean? Would would be nice. (laughs) Right, right, right. I would like to find out. Yeah. That will do it for today's show. Please make sure you download and subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Subscribe to the Locked On uh, Dynasty channel on YouTube. Remember to follow the show at, on Twitter at Locked On Dynasty. Follow Matt at Williamson NFL. And I'm Ryan, MC23. We'll be back next time with more Locked On Dynasty.